Hello there, my name is Dr. Amar Karimuddin and I'm a general surgeon practicing in Vancouver. Healthcare is front of mind for most British Columbians these days. What are your priorities for the healthcare system and how can physicians help you achieve them? We have a very straightforward policy around what we want from our healthcare system. We want everybody, regardless of where they are in the province, to be able to access high quality care for themselves and for their family. That includes having access to a family doctor or nurse practitioner, when they need emergency care, that they can access that emergency care when they're in crisis. And uh, for seniors, that they can ac access dignified quality care at home uh, to avoid being in a long-term care facility or a hospital for as long as possible. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward vision uh, for our healthcare system. None, none of it's possible without doctors. You know, uh, my life is actually not possible without a family doctor. I live with a family doctor. Uh, and I know that our healthcare system would similarly fall apart uh, without doctors. Uh, and, uh, and I'm really grateful uh, for the work we've done with Doctors of BC to date. We want to keep that up. Obviously, there has to be um, a one, like a, a hand in hand relationship between the physicians and government in terms of doing this. This should not be a top down approach by government. Uh, this should be done working in partnership with physicians as we see through this transition that's needed in British Columbia. Our priority for the healthcare system in BC is really to keep people healthy. And one of the best ways that we do that is to have a thriving public primary care system where doctors can work as a team with nurse practitioners, nurses, psychologists, social workers, other allied health professionals like dietitians or physiotherapists to be able to provide team-based care to their community in a way that not only keeps people in the community healthy, but makes the work of doctors and health professionals sustainable. This is the model that we've proposed that we call the Dogwood model. It's a, it's a system of community health centers that would be created so that doctors can create the teams that best serve the needs of their communities. That's going to be different in Whistler than it is in Qualicum, but it is that the doctors and the health professionals who know best how to serve the needs of people, and the role of government is to create that infrastructure that makes it easy for healthcare delivery. If elected, what would you do to address the shortage of doctors and other healthcare providers here in BC? The big challenge that we face in our healthcare system in the province, and I hear it from frontline healthcare workers, I hear it from people in communities, is the shortage of uh, doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. Uh, we have a number of different strategies to take that on. Uh, first of all, uh, recognizing and using the scope of practice of those professionals who are already out there, uh, getting them off of the sidelines, getting them working in our hospitals, getting them providing care to British Columbia is critically important. And so, uh, for example, we have internationally trained doctors and nurses uh, who are ready to go, uh, but who are tied up in uh, getting their licenses recognized to practice here in BC. We've worked with the college uh, to get to this point, uh, but now we need to provide clear direction to the College of Physicians, for example, that uh, doctors who are trained in comparable jurisdictions are able to get to work within a six week period. Uh, so from the UK, from Australia, for example, uh, get off the sidelines and get to work. For doctors from across Canada, they should be able to work here on a provisional license immediately. And so we'll be issuing that direction to the college. We're also opening a new medical school in Surrey to train up uh, the healthcare professionals we need at UBC, adding additional uh, residency spaces as well as 197 additional training spaces for more doctors. Uh, we've got to keep doing this work. And uh, now is not the time to cut the healthcare system as, uh, as John Rustad is proposing. Now's the time to invest, to train the healthcare workers we need so we don't find ourselves in this situation again. Clearly, this is a huge problem in BC. We need to do more training, but that will take time. We need to look at actually purchasing training spaces from outside of the province, but that still takes some time. Over the short term, we need to clean up our ability to be able to uh, get healthcare workers that come into BC into the system faster so that they can qualify to go through. That means we're going to have to work with the doctors and make some shifts in terms of how we go through um, th those, uh, that process for having uh, doctors get into our system. I think it's really important to start with the data when we talk about shortages here. We have 270 family doctors per 100,000 and that's higher than the Canadian average. What we have in BC is a shortage of family doctors willing to work in what has become a dysfunctional system. The adjustments to the pay model helped, but we need to go further with community health center model that makes sure that doctors have thriving conditions, that there's vacation time, that there's parental leave, that 
Uh, there's income security in the form of salaries, that there are pension plans and extended health benefits. We need to value the people who are delivering health care in this province. And we start by ensuring that the conditions are great for the health care providers. The way that we got to community health centres as a model was from literally hundreds of conversations over years with doctors and nurses and patients and experts and advocates and then seeing the benefits of community health centres where they do exist in BC and uh, from jo Dr. Jane Philpott's book on health for everyone, there's a lot of evidence that shows that the way we address the working conditions for doctors so that they can best provide health care for people is through community health centres and we are a big champion of that. If elected, what would you do to help specialists tackle their wait lists and ensure patients have more timely access to consultation and procedural care? Access to specialists is so important for British Columbia. It doesn't matter if you're facing a cancer diagnosis or uh, you need a, a knee replacement or a knee surgery or a hip surgery um, or uh, some other uh, complex health issue that only a specialist can assist with. We want to also assist the specialists to make sure that that process for British Columbians accessing your services is as quick and as painless as possible. So that's things like making sure that our referral system works properly. So you're not spending your time dealing with administration around referrals, you're actually spending your time with patients who need your care. Uh, making sure that referrals are, are good for a longer period of time so that pe people don't have to go back uh, to a primary uh, practitioner for a re-referral to access your services. That's a waste of everybody's time. And also making sure that our hospitals are built. We're building or uh, expanding 30 hospitals across the province. So as a specialist, you have access to the operating space, to the equipment you need uh, to deliver the care that you know that people need. Uh, you won't be working in, uh, in an old uh, hospital built by our grandparents uh, that has uh, serious issues around patient safety and quality of care. Uh, you'll be working in a modern facility uh, that ensures that you can provide the kind of care that you want to give. This is stuff that should have happened a long time ago. John Rustad uh, had the chance to do it. Uh, we're building the hospitals across the province. We're the ones making sure uh, that we're supporting the doctors in our province with high quality places to deliver care. There's no question this is a huge issue um, in BC. Too many people are dying on a wait list for diagnostic services and surgeries. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we get the red tape out of the, out of the system. We need to dramatically reduce the administration and the administration costs and process in there to allow doctors and specialists to be focused on their patients as opposed to on paperwork. This will also help to free up on quite a wide range of healthcare professionals to be able to help. But most importantly, we want to be able to unleash healthcare professionals and specialists ability to be able to deliver services. It doesn't have to all be done through the government system. This is why we want a system that can be delivered by both government and a non-government services so that there is that innovation that can happen and uh, specialists are much better uh, in a position to be able to service patients that are needed. I think the, the most important starting place is to hear from specialists what are the impediments to addressing their long wait lists? What are the problems that they're facing? Is it too much red tape? Is it a lack of the systems being able to talk to each other across health authorities? Is it the lack of a centralized waiting list so that people are getting to the specialists in the most effective way? But the people who are the experts are the specialists themselves. And so what we would do if elected as government, or even, which is a high possibility, if we're in a balance of power situation, we're gonna ensure that decisions made about the healthcare system are really informed by the experts in the healthcare system. I'm Dr. Josh Gregan, Rural Family Physician and past president of Doctors of EC. And my question is, what does your party intend to do to help healthcare in rural British Columbia, including emergency rooms, hospitals, clinics, and ultimately rural patients? I'm really uh, proud of the work that we've done with Doctors of BC to make sure that we're finally turning the corner on getting British Columbians access to a family doctor or nurse practitioner. One of the most stubborn uh, problems, you know, when, when the Liberals promised a GP for me when John Rustad was in government in 2015 or 2010, and they finished that program in 2015, and 190,000 fewer people had a family doctor, uh, we don't want that situation. So we, uh, through our agreement with Doctors of BC and Family Doctors, have 250,000 people now connected with a family physician, and uh, we're connecting another 160,000 people in the next six months. And we actually see by the end of 2025 through the Health Connect Registry, 
every British Columbian having access to that primary care that they need. A really stubborn issue though, regardless of, uh, of uh, where you are in the province, is emergency room staffing. Making sure that emergency rooms are properly staffed to meet the demands of British Columbians and to support uh, those hardworking front, uh, frontline healthcare workers in our emergency rooms is so central. We've actually uh, uh, faced uh, closures of rural emergency rooms, which should never happen. Uh, regardless of where people are in the province, they should be able to rely on the emergency room services that are available. So we're going to get rid of the red tape around whether or not a doctor can practice in one facility or another. If you're qualified to practice in British Columbia in an emergency room, you should be able to provide that care in different parts of the province. We're going to train up the medical professionals we need to ensure our, our uh, emergency rooms are well staffed and we'll work closely with the physicians, uh, with the nurses providing the care to make sure we realize our shared goal of ensuring that you have the working conditions you need to make sure that every British Columbian gets the care that they deserve. This is a huge issue, obviously. One of the things that we'll look at is we will pay for training for doctor, for some doctors and nurses, and in return, ask for a five-year commitment to service and underserviced communities. Particularly these communities where we've had ER closures on a regular basis, we need to be able to get the professionals in there to be able to keep these things, these facilities open. So this is going to be a huge focus for us as government in terms of how we make sure these professionals can practice uh, you know, across the province. <clears throat> but once again, it's about changing the model. Today, uh, with the Health Professions and Occupation Act, with so many things that are going on uh, in our healthcare system, I'm hearing from more and more doctors that they're burnt out and they want to leave British Columbia. I'm hearing from many nurses that they want to leave, they're burnt out. We need to change the model so that we can show that there is a better way to be able to deliver healthcare services in British Columbia, and it'll give us a much better opportunity to be able to, like I say, attract and retain those professionals we have and then through uh, incentives, trying to make sure that we have those professionals being able to deliver services right across this province, especially in small and rural communities. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on this today. In 2022, Adam Olson, the MLA for Saanich, North and the Islands and I went around to rural communities and spent a lot of time talking to doctors and patients and learning about what the impediments to rural healthcare. We do not have an equitable healthcare system in BC because people in rural communities do not have the level of service that people in urban centers have. So we have to be strong advocates for rural healthcare. Community health centers is one way to improve rural healthcare. We need the rural retention uh, program to be focused on keeping doctors and keeping health care professionals in rural communities. And then we have to look at the bigger picture, at things like equitable care. Women should be able to give birth close to where they live. And in this province, far too many women have to travel a long ways to be able to just give birth. And when people have to travel, we should consider the cost that is uh, on them. So travel costs, accommodation costs, really shouldn't be a barrier for people accessing healthcare in this province, and it should be equitable. And I'll end on this. Let's create the conditions where people stay healthy. And that is a public health approach to all policy. That's building communities that are healthy. That's investing in, in clean energy. That's making sure that we are not, as a government, uh, putting our money and energy and resources towards things that make our communities less healthy. And so let's have a whole of province approach to keeping people healthy and to ensuring that doctors are right alongside the decision making when it comes to healthcare in this province. How would you ensure that BC is investing the appropriate amount of money when it comes to healthcare technology and infrastructure? The key of uh, healthcare, I think, and, and the sustainability of healthcare, uh, both for the experience that people have going through healthcare, that they're accessing the best quality care available in the world, uh, leading edge treatments, but also sustainability financially for taxpayers to make sure that costs are under control. Uh, technology can provide significant support in both of these areas. Uh, so making sure that we're uh, uh, taking the lead from physicians about how to uh, ensure that electronic medical records are working with the overall system so that patients have access to information so that you have access about all the information related to the patient who's in front of you, critically important. In terms of the technologies that are available, I believe in science. 
I believe in vaccines. I support mRNA vaccines and all the amazing life sciences work that's happening here in British Columbia, creating a lot of jobs and opportunity, which is why we're putting a new research building on the campus of the, Saint, the new St. Paul's Hospital so that BC residents get access to clinical trials, get to benefit from the life sciences system that's employing so many people in high quality jobs. I don't think that vaccines turn you into a magnet. I don't think that vaccines uh, don't actually work and are part of a globalist conspiracy like John Rustad and the BC Conservatives do. I can't believe I'm saying that sentence. We believe in technology. We believe in supporting patients with the best possible care. And physicians help us uh, ensure that the care that's delivered uh, is done so effectively and efficiently. And you're a key part of that process. I think quite frankly, that the professionals have the best approach in terms of what is available and what is out there. The model that we are talking about will allow for that innovation, will allow for that kind of investment. It doesn't have to all be done through government. Government needs to be purchasing the services and we need to make sure that we purchase uh, the services from wherever it can be provided so that we can improve our wait lists um, and get people to the appropriate services that are needed. So that technological investment is going to be critical. Government needs to be able to step up the plate and be able to support that, but we need that innovation and drive from the entrepreneurs, from the from the healthcare professionals to be able to deliver those services for British Columbia. Yeah, I've heard a lot about frustrations with technology from doctors and particularly the fact that uh, across the different health authorities in this province, we have different technology that, that healthcare professionals are using and that technology can't interact with uh, the other forms of technology. It's really important that technology is a help and not a hindrance to doctors and to healthcare professionals. And again, the most important thing here is to listen to doctors, to hear about what the problems are with the technology and to make decisions based on what is going to get us the best outcomes when we, when we do implement technological changes and upgrades. In terms of infrastructure, let's start from where the gaps are. Where is the infrastructure not meeting the needs of doctors and patients? And let's fill those gaps. I think what we have in BC is an enormous amount of very thick bureaucracy on top of our healthcare system. And a lot of time and energy and resources and money is going into that bureaucracy. And in a lot of ways, what we're hearing is that that can actually be an impediment to getting the streamlined care that we want to see on the ground. So the starting point is uh, listen to health professionals, work with doctors, and I think we do have to find ways to reduce the bureaucratic burden on top of the healthcare system in this province.